The year was 2008 and I finally got my hands on the brand spanking new PlayStation 3 system. And the first game that I will play on it would be Metal Gear Solid 4. And this was a trend that I unknowingly set for myself 10 years beforehand. Apart from demo discs, the first proper game that I played on the original PlayStation would be Metal Gear Solid 1. Four years later, with the release of the PlayStation 2, again, apart from demo discs, the first proper game I played on that system would be Metal Gear Solid 2. So it made sense for me to have Metal Gear Solid 4 be the first game I played on my brand new PlayStation 3 console. And after beating the campaign in less than 24 hours, and discovering that my new system had built-in Wi-Fi, I know, I was a bit of a slow kid. I successfully connected to the internet, and created myself a PlayStation Network account while slightly lying about my age so I don't get my parents involved, and long and behold, I was playing my favourite and first ever online game, Metal Gear Online. And I was instantly hooked. I legitimately played this thing every single day for 4 months straight like it was a religion. Then unfortunately about 10 years ago Konami went ahead and shut the servers down for Metal Gear Online in Metal Gear Solid 4. So to say that I was depressed and upset would be a little bit of an understatement. The service would resume with the release of Metal Gear Solid 5, and while I did have a little bit of fun with it, it just wasn't the same. Now fortunately however, that is where the bad news ends. Because a couple of days ago, I was looking up Metal Gear Online to see more about its history, and then I came across an article from a year and a half ago, which stated that the online services for Metal Gear Solid 4 has been restored by a small group of people for the PC and the PlayStation 3. And I was filled with so much joy and so much excitement that I just needed to do something about it. It's back online! Yes! Oh my god! It's back! Yes! It's back online! Yes! Yeah, okay, I may have overreacted, but it made me feel good. Now, how do we set this up and how does it run today? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is download the file, which I'll have a link for in the video description below. So once you click that link, all you have to do is click the download button, and then it'll give this warning of won't be able to scan for viruses, but that's okay, it's all safe. Then you just click the download anyway, and in a second, once it's ready to go, yep, there it is, the file will download, and once it's downloaded, then we'll move on to the next step. Now the second thing that we'll need to do is to create an account to play the game online. Now all you have to do, I'll have a link for it in the video description below, so click that link and you'll be taken to the website that you see right here. And just type in a username for yourself and a password that you want for your account you're about to make, and your email address that you want your account to be tied to. And then when you click the I'm not a robot button, just click on create the account. And at some point you'll get a message to your email address saying to activate your account. And once you get that email address, just click on that link and you're all good to go. And after that, we can now open the program and get everything up and running and start the game. So now what we can do for this third step is extract all the files from the zip folder that was downloaded. So we'll just double click on that and we'll drag this folder to anywhere you want on the system. I've already put mine on the desktop. And once everything is copied over, we can open that and click on the RPCS3 application. And there it is, Metal Gear Online 2, ready to go, but there's a couple things that we should check first. So now we'll just right click on the game here and click on change custom configuration to check a few things. And what you're seeing on the screen should be enabled by default. If it isn't, then change it to what is on the screen right now. And now we'll click on the GPU tab here and what you're seeing on the screen should be the default settings. Now, what I will advise is that if you're running on lesser or older hardware, then probably run the game with these settings first, just to see what kind of experience that you get. But if you find it's giving you lackluster performance, then start by dropping the resolution down to 1080p, or even the default 720p, and see what happens there. And if that doesn't do much, then probably limit the frame rate from 60fps down to 30. So that will give you a much more smoother experience overall. But a couple things I am going to do right off the bat for myself, 
is enable FSR upscaling since I'm running at a slightly higher resolution, 3440 by 1440 as opposed to 2560 by 1440. And a neosotropic filtering, I'll turn that to 16. So now that will give me a slightly crispier picture quality. And now we'll click on the Metal Gear Online tab. Make sure that the DNS is set to 8888 and the universal plug and play port is set to 5730. It should be set to that by default, but it's always good to have a look. The other options you can do in here is disable the game's user interface, which is useful for screenshots and videos, but personally I don't mind it being on, so I'm just going to leave the option off. Reduce stage quality is enabled as well for a moderate performance boost, and disable motion blur is also enabled by default, which is great. I hate motion blur. And finally, if you want the game to start in full screen, click on the emulator tab, and turn on the start games in full screen mode option here. For now, I'm just going to leave it off for the sake of the video. The advanced options should not be touched, everything should be set to what you're seeing right now. And in debug, GPU texture scaling should be the only option enabled by default. And with that, we can click on save custom configuration, then go to pads to configure your keyboard and mouse if you're going to use that, or set up your PS3, PS4, PS5 controller, or another source of input like an Xbox 360 controller if you want. Personally, I'm using a PS4 controller, so DualShock 4, save, and we can now load up the game. The next day. And one good sleep later, let's go ahead and start the game. Now, what you're seeing right now, the first time you load this game up, that will take a lot longer than what it did just for me. But once it's all done, we can click the X button and everything will load. And now we've made it to the license agreement page, but this has been completely overridden with progress updates that has been made since the service came back online. So to continue, we'll say yes, and enter game ID and login. And this is relating to that account that we created after we download those files earlier. So yeah, we'll press X. And as you can see, I've already entered mine. Now when we go down to the password, when I press the X button, this is why I suggested we don't have the window size set to full screen just yet because this text window will show up here and you have to type in your game ID and password with your keyboard. Now you can do this in full screen as well, so I'll show you right now. I'll just exit that, double click to make that full screen and I'll press X again and I'll just type in my password, enter and there we go, my password loads up automatically. Now I'll just get back out of full screen. You can either save your ID only or save your ID and password so it logs in by itself, which I personally don't recommend, just in case you forget your password. Now we go to OK, logging in, and now, yeah, you will get this error first, so don't worry about that, just press the escape button and it'll continue just fine. And there we go. Okay, let's get ready, we'll start the game, and I'll select my character as I've already created one. Yep, hello buddy. Okay, we're ready to go, so lobby select, free battle, and now currently it says there were 31 players online. And now this is a bit of a small community, there's like a maximum of 120 or 130 players registered for this thing. But hopefully the more that this gets out there, then the more people we can get onto this service to bring that community up to where it should be. So, yep, yeah, we'll continue with that. Join the game, and let's see what we've got. We've got a team deathmatch. A free for all, and I'll go for this team deathmatch one. And here we go, we are online. And here we are, ready to start the game. Now, there's already a couple things that I noticed different right off the bat. For starters, when I played this game back in the day, my ping was always in the red zone. The only time it wasn't like that is when I was hosting the game. However, this time my connection overall is much better than what it used to be on the PS3 system back in the day. And I'm also already at level 10 despite only signing up a couple of days ago. But that's because this service just gave me the level 10 rank by default along with all the skills and achievements that can be unlocked as you play. And even the additional DLC maps that were made available later on are included here as well, which is a really nice touch. Anyway, let's start the game. And here we go. Another thing that I noticed that was different is that the PS3 system always ran this at 30 FPS most of the time. Whereas on this system with an Intel Core i7-12700K and an RTX 3070, 
I'm getting a near constant 60 frames per second pretty much all of the time and it feels so smooth and so beautiful. This is the way I remember it. And then when I go back and play it on the PS3, it's like, did I seriously play it like that for years? Oh, I'm about to get someone here. Please let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Oh, oh, oh. Behind. Yes, yes, come on. Gotcha. Yes, still got it after 10 years of being away. Let's see if I can do it again. Oh, I just made him do it. <laughs> I made him ragdoll. I miss those ragdoll effects sometimes. Now, I've actually played this already for quite a number of hours when I first um, logged onto this thing. And yep, there we go, three headshots. I've still got it after this whole time. Damn, I'm dominating. I actually don't remember the last time I did this well. Anyway, back to what I was saying, a couple of days ago, I was playing this for quite a few hours and it was the most intense nostalgia trip I have ever been on. I legitimately thought that it was 2008 again and I was back in high school and I was even struggling to remember what class I had the next day. And then when I tried to exit the game, there you go. Oh man. Well, guess you can't always win them all. And then when I tried to exit the game by pressing the middle button like I did on the PS3 controller and noticed that it wasn't working, I looked down and I saw my keyboard and mouse and I realized, holy shit, it's 2022. So when you have a nostalgia trip as powerful as that, you know something is really, really good. Oh man, oh, I started off so well, now it's not doing so well. What a shame. Yeah, too fast for you! You know guys, I, you know, I actually haven't had this much fun in so long. This is making me feel so young. It does feel like it's 2008 and I'm back in high school. This is how nostalgic this is for me. I'm just so happy it's back online. So happy. Okay, and you know what guys, I honestly don't care that we lost because I had so much fun playing this and that is what the whole point of this whole project is about. To bring a service that was killed off early by its creators be brought back to life by a small group of loyal fans for everyone who enjoyed the game to have fun with it once again and to experience it in different ways if they choose so. Now, this was a hell of a lot of fun and an awesome nostalgia trip. Now, is this the most fun you could have with your pants on? Personally, I reckon so. But then again, I am Dipstick Joy, so would I recommend you picking up this game and giving it a shot? Game on! Well guys, thanks for checking out today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did. And also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already for more future content that will head your way. And be sure to give me a like and follow on my social medias. Links in the video description below. And if I don't see you in the next video or in Metal Gear Online, I'll catch you in the ring. Game on. Ha! As I clapped, I turned into a box. Oh, I love this game. I'm so glad it's back. It's back online.